Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Today I'm going to talk about phonetics and phonology. Many students, when you ask them about phonetics and phonology, they may give unclear answers and they may make no difference between phonetics and phonology. But actually, these are two branches of linguistics. And both of them are interested in the study of pronunciation. But what are the differences between phonetics and phonology? That's what we're going to speak, talk about today. Actually, there are three types of phonetics. Three types of phonetics. Acoustic phonetics, auditory phonetics, and articulatory phonetics. And our, our interest is in articulatory phonetics because articulatory phonetics is the linguistic the linguistic part of phonetics it's called articulatory phonetics because it's the study of how speech sounds are articulated or are produced so sometimes we call it articulatory phonetics sometimes we call it descriptive phonetics because it describes how sounds how speech sounds are produced okay but this is the definition of articulatory phonetics. What can we expect to study in articulatory phonetics? Actually, we can study the division of these sounds, how sounds are produced and how they are divided. Okay, so in order to describe these sounds, I have to study the divisions or the categories of these sounds. Sounds are mainly divided into consonants and vowels what the meaning of a consonant and what the meaning of a vowel phonetically according to their production consonants are produced with obstruction of their flu consonants are produced with obstruction of the air flow so the air coming up from the lungs is stopped partially or completely at some point of production okay this is the definition of a consonant what about vowels vowels are produced without obstruction of the airflow so this is the main difference between consonants and vowels vowels are produced without any any obstruction of the airflow while consonants are produced with obstruction of the airflow so in phonetics, we are going to study the division of sounds, how sounds are divided into consonants and vowels. 24, 24 consonants and 20 vowels, 20 vowels. The categorization, number two, the categorization of consonants according to places of articulation, manners of articulation and voicing. So after that, we are going to study in detail how we can differentiate between consonants. Actually, consonants can be differentiated according to the places of articulation. What is the place of articulating these sounds? For example, the p, p has the place of articulation in the, in the lips. So it's called bilabial, bilabial consonant. Number two manners of articulation how they are produced how the sounds are produced p is produced by completing by completely stopping the flow so it's called a stop a stop or a stop because the air is completely stopped before it explodes so it's sometimes called Plosives. They can be called plosives because when the air is allowed to pass freely, it passes causing plosion. So they are called plosives. And number three, voicing. And voicing means the sound is voiced or voiceless in the sense that this sound is produced or this consonant is produced with voicing from the vocal tracts. So the vocal tracts cause voicing vibration. Uh, while producing this sound or not so for example i have the f, f, 
and I have the the first sound is voiceless while the second is is voiced okay so this is the difference between voicing and voiced and voiceless we can also study vowels the description of vowels how these vowels are produced okay and before studying each vowel we can divide vowels into short vowels long vowels and diphthongs both short vowels and long vowels are called pure vowels or simple vowels in the sense that they are produced without a glide of the tongue or without movement in the tongue of the tongue so they are produced in one point but in diphthongs, they are compound vowel phonemes. They are compound vowel phonemes. A compound vowel phoneme is a diphthong. So it's one phoneme, one unit. But it's composed of two parts. It's composed of two parts, like a cocktail. When you have a glass of cocktail, it's one glass. But it has more than one element. Okay? That's the same idea. In diphthong is a cocktail of two phonemes, of two uh, vowels, okay? But they make one phoneme through a glide of the tongue. So the tongue moves while producing the diphthong. The tongue moves from one point to another. So what else can we study? We can also have an idea about the phonetic alphabet or the phonetic chart. It's called the International Phonetic Alphabet, the International Phonetic Alphabet, or the IPA. Here you would find the division of vowels onto monophthongs. Monophthongs means short vowels and long vowels. These are the short vowels and the long vowels, okay? You would find that the long vowel has a colon, okay? A colon. These are the diphthongs, and we have eight diphthongs, okay? After that, we have consonants. And these are the symbols of the consonants, okay? And they are divided according to the place of articulation, the manner of articulation, and the voicing, okay? But what about vowels? Vowels actually are not divided according to voicing because all vowels, all vowels must be voiced. All vowels must be voiced. Yes. Now we can go after finishing this phonetic part, we can go to the phonology. What about phonology? What is the meaning of phonology? Phonology is essentially the description of the systems and patterns of speech sounds in a language. So in phonology, in phonology, we do not study the production of sounds, but the combination of these sounds, how these sounds are combined together and how they make patterns so some sounds can come with other sounds other sounds cannot come with some sounds okay so in english for example i cannot have something like sahba okay this is not possible in english sahba yani this this combination is not acceptable in english in the english language this is not acceptable okay so you can study the following number one in phonology we can study the phonotactics phonotactics means constraints on the permissible combination of sounds in a language in the english language there are constraints on the permissible combination of sounds in a language as i said some sounds can come together others cannot come together some sounds come can come at the beginning some sounds cannot come at the beginning. For example, the j sound cannot come at the beginning in the English language. Maybe only one word. The uh, ha sound, ha sound cannot come at the end of a syllable. Can, can, cannot come at the end of a syllable. So these, this is called phonotactics. Phonotactics. Which combination of sounds are acceptable and which are not acceptable? After that, we have syllable structure. What is the structure of syllables? Okay. Actually, simply, a syllable is composed of 
a vowel, a vowel. This is the center of the syllable with or without consonants. So a syllable may have only one vowel with one consonant, with two consonants, with three consonants, with consonants at the beginning and the consonants at the end with only consonants at the beginning. So this is the structure of the syllable. So we study the structure of the syllable. After that, we can study the stress, stress placement. And this is very important in pronunciation because I can, I may know the sounds of this word, but I cannot know where the stress is placed. The stress is placed in if I have more than one syllable, so one of these syllables is stressed, mean that it's more, it's stronger than the other syllable or syllables. So it is pronounced with more force and louder pitch. It would be noticeable, noticeable. Okay, so this is the meaning of the stress. The stress can be found in a word, and this you can find in a dictionary because actually we don't have fixed place for the stress in the English language in the sense that the stress may be on the first syllable sometimes on the second syllable sometimes on the third and in the, in the last or final syllable unlike for example the the French language in the French language you would find the stress on the the final syllable okay all the time but in English no it's not uh, it does not have a fixed place we can also study consonant clusters, consonant clusters, which combinations of consonants can come together at the beginning, which combination of consonants can come at the end and how we can produce these consonants, which they uh, come together. One of the basic problems of consonant clusters is that we usually or the learners usually insert a vowel between two consonants, like, for example, class, class. It has ka, la, ka, followed by la, two consonants. Some students say kilos, kilos. So they add or they insert i sound between the two consonants. After that, we can study rhythm. And rhythm means, rhythm means that uh, the, the time given to the stressed syllables. Okay. So actually, the time is given to the stressed syllables, not to the, not to all the syllables. That's why we call it stress timed in English. It's called stress timed. Stress timed in the sense that stress timed means that we distribute the time according to the number of to the number of stress stresses, not according to the number of syllables. So it's according to the number of stressed syllables, not according to the number of syllables. So if I have a sentence and this sentence has uh, two, two, nine syllables or uh, ten syllables, so and just two stressed syllables, so the time would be distributed according to the number of stressed syllables. Okay. But what about the other syllable? They would be produced or pronounced very quickly. Okay. Very quickly. So when I say I have a book, I have a book. I'm not going to say I have a book. No, only book is stressed because this is the noun. So I have a book. I have a book. Okay. I have a book. You may also stress that the verb, okay, but the louder stress or the, the, the basic sentence stress here would be on the book, the last word in the sentence and the noun. If I want to stress another word for a specific purpose, so I would put the stress in it and make it louder than others and make it clearer than others and give it much more time, okay? So the rhythm of the sentence means that how I distribute time according to the number of stressed syllables. After that, we study intonation and intonation is very important because it shows us different types of uh, intonations and tones, how uh, it has a rising intonation or a low, low intonation, rising,